hello to my Capricorns. Capricorns, we are, the moon is in Cancer. And Cancer is the mother of the zodiac sign. It's also the money sign of the zodiac. And so it's a, it's a waxing crescent moon. Waxing crescent moon phase is just a reminder that without um, good intentions, good clear plans, our intentions will never be more than just that, except just intentions, right? So don't forget to get up. When you wake up, set an intention or whatever time of the day, set an intention for the day because you can change the course of your entire day by just setting an intention and making sure you honor the intention that you set. Some of the things that you all can do during the waxing crescent moon phase is use positive affirmations. You can use visualization techniques. You can anchor your intentions by focusing on one thing as your priority goal. You can form your intentions and set out a clear plan of action. You can also work on your self-confidence and you can write out your intentions and read them every single day. Someone requested a bonus video and that's what this is, a bonus video. You already have another video that's going to go up um, possibly later on. I'm not sure what time you're going to watch this video, but I know this could be a very sensitive time for a lot of people. So I want to help you with, um, you know, uh, you know, helping you with like just the moon phases and moon connects us with our feelings, our emotions, our subconscious habits, our moods, um, our intuition. And so if this is a, if this is a time where you need a little bit more nurturing, then, uh, you have tools like pulling your birth chart, finding out what your moon sign is. Um, and I do have links for birth charts below for your birth chart below. I also have the link for Chiron below. So pull that too. Um, that's going to help you to kind of sort of nurture yourself. Then you can go to, you can go to, uh, Google and type in, you know, how to nurture whatever your moon sign is. So we're going to go ahead and get into your reading and I'm speaking to you wherever Capricorn is in your birth chart. So wherever Capricorn is in your birth chart, I am speaking to you, but it is a waxing crescent moon phase. We're not in the first quarter moon phase yet. We're still feeling the effects of the new moon phase. We're in a whole new cycle, meaning rose colored glasses have been removed. You have some time to now process your thoughts of whatever happened last cycle um, and then move forward, right? So the moon is in a water sign and cancer is ruled by the moon. So if you've been feeling super sensitive, you know, remember the moon stays in a zodiac sign about two and a half days. So protect your energy, protect your energy this weekend because cancer being ruled by the moon um, makes you super sensitive, right? So remember the moon connects with our instincts, our emotions, our intuition, our unconscious, our instincts, our habits, our emotions, um, moods. Um, it's a water sign. So that's our emotions, our intuition, quality of relationships, friendships, spirituality. So if rose colored glasses have been removed in your, um, in the previous cycle, um, about friendships and the quality of relationships and those kind of things, and they've been heavy on your mind, then, and, and those relationships have closed out, please, please, please be gentle with yourselves because relationships ending, whether they're friendships, working relationships, um, you know, whatever, um, you have to, you know, separate from your pets. Those are also relationships too, because our pets are family, right? So all of those things, be gentle with yourself. So let's get into it. Let's see what's in your cards. Let's see what's in your cards. Let's see what's in your cards. And if you need to go in, cancer symbol is a crab shell. It is also your polarity sign. If you feel like you need to go into your crab shell and kind of sort of get away from people, you know, just take some time to be by yourself to just kind of process your thoughts and give yourselves a little extra nurturing, a little extra hugs and kisses, please do that. I'm talking to men and women. Uh, Capricorns or however you identify, right? Let's get into it. Let's see what's in your cards. 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 All right. I've already prayed over your cards and I've already asked Most High God for complete and total clarity. If you're feeling a little bit more imaginative, sympathetic, protective, tenacious, and loyal, um, you know that you landed on the light side of the moon in Cancer. But if you're feeling a little bit more possessive, moody, critical, self-pitying, and also a nag 
you know, that you landed on the dark side of the moon in Cancer, right? But somebody is definitely awakening from some nightmares, right? And, you know, some past nightmares. Here we have the Five of Swords. It may not have known how just those past nightmares could have made you come across a little hostile, you know, to people. And unfortunately, you know, people will play mind games. They don't give you a chance to. Sword energy is traumatic, right? You could have lost loved ones. And if, you, if, you, if you've lost loved ones or friendships have ended or jobs ended, you know, in a traumatic way, maybe you cut off from some people or cut off access or something that where you felt powerless or you felt like your power was taken away or somebody snatched a plug out of the wall and just ended something, you know, uh, abruptly. Um, that could be heavy on your mind, you know, this weekend. But the way you're going to save yourself, this is Knight of Cups here. We have the Three of Pentacles. We also have the King of Cups here. And we also have the Eight of Pentacles. The way that you're going to save yourself is, like I said, pulling your birth chart, finding out what your moon sign is, and finding out just, um, <clears throat> just how some of the things that you can do to nurture yourselves. Not everybody has loved ones around them that can help nurture them and do things or even know. Sometimes you can have a whole room filled with people around you and nobody knows how to nurture you, right? So for example, like I said before, a moon in Cancer, you can choose to land on the light side or the dark side of the moon in Cancer, but a moon in Cancer gives you gives everybody, no matter what your sun sign is, it gives you sensitivity and imagination and enormous personal charisma uh, and heart warm, like a warm hearted romantic nature, specifically for you as an earth sign, you have an unshakable loyalty and strong passions under the influence of Cancer Moon. And this combination gives you an ability to capture the imagination of the public. So imagine if, uh, for instance, friendships ended or romantic relationships ended or like business relationships with a friend could have ended, those kind of things. Let's say, for instance, your your uh, moon is a is in Taurus, right? Um, some of the things that you can do is embrace stability. You can provide, um, you know, physical touch. Um, you can provide some form of self care, some kind of indulgence. You can set boundaries. You can explore uh, niche topics. You can also consider pets. And just to delve a little bit deeper, because I know, like I said, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to help you all to like, you know, the free tips, you know, so that you don't have to go out and spend a whole lot of money. Like a lot of times when people are waking up from nightmares and replaying things over and over and over again in their mind, they're searching for things to uh, nurture their spirits, right? So you don't want to find it at the bottle of a bottom of a bottle or bottle. I mean, a bottom of something that you wake up later and you just go, man, I shouldn't have eaten that whole bag of cookies, or I shouldn't, you know, just you know, had that spoon going to the bottom of that ice cream barrel, or you know, that kind of stuff, or engaging in some kind of unhealthy thing to put a band aid over the wounds. And so I try to help you all with very healthy ways of um, nursing yourselves because think about sword wound and then this water right here you're trying to pour water over wounds let the air hit it you know take some time to think journal those kind of things so when the, when the moon is in cancer it's a very protective time where you just kind of sort of think how can i how can i nurture myself even if i have people around me who don't know how to nurture even if you're you know if you have a great relationship with mom grandma uh, whether they're here or not, you're going to have to eventually learn how to nurture yourself, you know, and then also tell other people around you, if you have a, a spouse, you know, um, or partner, you know, just letting them know that you may need some time to go back in your crab shell. And like I said, I'm going to use a moon sign in Taurus, for, for example, you can look up your moon sign. My moon sign is not Taurus, but I'm just using that for example because I just chose just chose another Earth sign. You know, like you're in Earth, you're in uh, Capricorn if you're watching the channel. But I'll just choose another Earth uh, Moon sign. So one way to like um, a Taurus Moon um, is is known for practicality. Represents you know uh, like this um, you know embracing stability. So a, a Taurus Moon thrives on stability and can be resistant to change. And so you can seek out relationships that offer security and loyalty. That's very important, especially if, again, 
you're in if you if you look back and you just say you know something has ended and it's just been a nightmare for you just to even think about all the things that you were going through and how you could be feeling regretful maybe somebody says something to you that just really hit you to the core um and uh maybe resonated some somewhat um another thing you all can do is like find joy in the everyday that's enjoying the beauty of the everyday maybe you need to go take a drive you know enjoy the beauty of the trees you know um do some grounding some things like that if your moon is in taurus another thing that you can do is like provide physical touch um lots of stimulation warm hugs massages casual brushing you know casually you know um you know, like if you, you have a partner or somebody like that, or if you don't, even if you're by yourself and you just feel like, okay, I need to do something that's going to keep me rooted and grounded and just like finding and enjoy. Maybe if you live near a botanical garden or a arboretum or something like that, maybe you can go, um, you know, become, you know, with nature or something like that. Um, maybe taking a luxurious bath or a long shower or maybe a spa day. You can give yourselves right um, if your moon is in Taurus or, you know, set boundaries, set very clear boundaries around social media habits. You know, you don't want to um, look at things that's going to remind you that's going to take you down this dark, this dark spiraling, you know, thing, this just of memories, you know, past memories and also consider pets that will reciprocate love without draining your energy. So in other words, you want to do things that's going to pour into you, no matter what your moon sign is. You want to do things that's going to pour into you and not things that's going to drain you. So, and sometimes social media can drain you. If you go and you, you know, looking at things and things are constantly reminding you of you and, you know, other energies. Another thing that you also want to consider too is, remember when we talk about water, that's the sacral chakra energy. And so when I talk about cutting ties, I'm talking about completely cutting ties and not going back down memory lane in any way, shape, form, or fashion to give yourselves an opportunity to heal. That's pictures, that's music, that's anything that reminds you of something that has ended and that you're trying to heal from. Don't torture yourself. Don't torment yourself by doing anything that's going to keep you connected in any way, shape, form, or fashion. It's time to cut ties because otherwise it'll put you in this right here. Keep looking back and you won't realize that just it can make you come across as hostile to other people. And it's like, okay, short tempered or checked out somewhere and people, you know, trying to have a conversation with you. You're just zoned out somewhere. And, and again, you're trying to get good news trying to come your way. So this is where I see you headed. This is the King of Cups right here. A person who is pouring a cup, you know, pouring into yourself, but also, um, you know, and, and, um, and this is an energy that's coming across your path. That's helping you to learn how to pour into yourself when you feel like a little. So if you, if you have like a trusted confident or confidant, somebody that you can talk to Capricorn, you know, during this time, that's going to really encourage you to pour into yourself very much like what I'm doing here in this video, but they all, they also have to know, you know, specifically what your moon sign is. Um, and then also give you tips and pointers and just kind of lead you in that direction. That's why, um, that's why, uh, I'm doing this video. You know, I know, a, uh, an additional video was requested. A bonus video was requested, but I'm also being led to just kind of help you all with this. Cause I know it's a super sensitive time, you know, just, just in some parts of the world, you know, what's being celebrated this weekend. So one of the things, another thing you can keep in mind too, is that this is a great time. This is connecting us to teamwork, right? This is a great time for you to sit down and write out your definition of teamwork. What does teamwork look like to you when it's surrounding money? What does the definition of teamwork look like for you in your personal and your professional life? Because that also is, remember, it's never just about paper and coins. Remember, pentacles is not just money. It's also wealth, material possessions, practicality, your home life, your health, your generosity, and so when you think about quality of relationships, you could be thinking about exes from 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago, or just last week or five years ago or whatever. And you got to sit down and put out, write out, what does the moon, um, excuse me, what is your definition of teamwork? Your definition 
of teamwork. What does that mean to you, right? So just by definition, teamwork is when a group of people work together to achieve a common goal or complete a task efficiently, right? So when we're talking about time, money, generosity, all of those things, those things before you get this task started, this is where you're your own project manager. This is where you start talking about whether you're thinking about dating somebody and you're talking about you all being a team together, friendship, working on some kind of project where there's money involved, all of those things, conversations need to be had, right? And so that'll put a person, when something has ended, that'll put a person in a nightmare state, like I should have spoken up, I should have done this, I should have done that, and now you have time to think. That's why it's that's why it's important to have people around you to encourage you, your earth sign, to not let your soil get dry. Hopefully that makes sense to somebody, right? So we have the eight of pentacles here. So that instead of you spending a large chunk of your day thinking about nightmares, having uh, it's better to have people in your life that's encouraging you to pour into yourself so that you won't get so dry. Your soil is your soil is dry, and it's hard for you to grow any ideas, create anything because your your mind is checked out on something else. Hopefully that makes sense to somebody, and hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it's very helpful to you. Yeah, hopefully it's very helpful to you. Yeah, it can be, like I said before, moon, uh, the moon aligning with our feelings, subconscious habits. I mean, life is just happening. And just when we got nine of swords here um, and you're waking up from some kind of nightmare in a sense, you can kind of also jump ahead of this too. Um, we're going to have a full moon in a fire sign. It's a flower moon and it's going to be in a fire sign. It's going to be in Sagittarius. You can sit down and write, you know, dear source, you know, dear higher power, dear God, you know, whoever you're addressing, dear self, you know, I release this. I'm now aware of um, the swords one through one through eight getting to the sword of number nine and how not taking action sooner air is. Air connects us with action. It connects us with thinking. It connects us with ideas, logic, truth, intelligence. It connects us with um, communication. I, I now know that I, I could have communicated something better. I could have I could have opened up my mouth. I could have said something, right? I could have, and then again, communicating, you know, communicating because we're talking about air, right? And so moving forward. So when you go back, it's only to look back to see how far you've come. And that's it. This is in all of your relationships, right? So when the moon moves into cancer, it's no joke because cancer is that, um, cancer is the mother. It's, cancer is ruled by the moon. So it's like a double, like a double emotional feeling, you know, for that. And so you can toss some things into a burning bowl and release it and learn the lesson and move on. But here I want to add another part to this too, because Pluto is currently retrograde. Pluto is the outermost planet. It's a generational planet. It's the planet of death rebirth. So while you may have thinking, okay, your something has ended permanently and you could be working to get to the rebirth side, I want you to also consider this too. Not only is Pluto the planet of death, rebirth, it's a regenerative planet, so you will survive from whatever you whatever you left in the past, you will survive from that. Um, you it's also it's the the planet of metamorphosis. So this is a time of, you know, planting new seeds, right? Setting intention, you know, learning how to, you know, process your thoughts when you're interacting with people and communicating in a way that you know, your community, how do you like to communicate? This is the way I communicate. I need some time to process my thoughts, this kind of thing that's going to help you moving forward. But I also really want you to consider this too. You don't know, you know, you're not a mind reader. Pluto is also the planet of obsession. So if sword energy, because it's so traumatic, you don't know who is obsessed with hurting you. Okay, I want you all to consider that, right? You don't know if, if there are energies that, you know, while you're learning how to nurture yourself and pour back into yourself and taking the time, this is why I stress so much pouring into yourself. As that moon is waxing and waning, you want to take some time to get it all together. 
Just like you need rest, which is one of the most overlooked rituals, and document your dreams and all that. Life is going to go a whole lot easier for somebody where you take the steps to say, okay, I've had some nightmares, I've awakened from some nightmares. I need to process my thoughts. I need to kind of sort of have a, a, a safe space to talk to whomever that, I, that you know is not going to go anywhere else, you know, those kind of things. And, um, and so I've, I've at least communicated, I've gotten it out, right? But you want to talk to a resource that's going to help you, someone who is very wise, someone who is very knowledgeable about leading you in the right direction, no trauma bonding, just reading you in the right, leading you in the right direction. Because when you're pouring out, you need somebody to pour fresh water back into you, not their toxicity, Fresh water, okay? That's very important. No trauma bonding because it's a very sensitive time. We talk about night energy. Here we have the um, high priestess, right? The high priest, excuse me. So high priest energy is just more or less like now you have uh, an innate uh, higher mind, an innate spiritual understanding of things when you're on the light side of high priest energy. On the dark side is a person who is very materialistic, right? All you care about is money. I mean, physical money, the material money. All I care about is getting money. I don't care who I cut down to get it, that kind of thing. So um, if if somebody is accusing you of just being materialistic or they say, you know, Capricorn, all you look, all you think about is the material and stuff like that. And, and, and they feel like to some degree, emotionally, they are hurt. And, um, and, and money is involved in some way, shape, form, or fashion. They feel like you were just the materialistic one, or you feel like they were the materialistic one, like they was the gold digger or whatever the case may be. It's best for you to go ahead and take that sword and just cut it off and move on with your life. Just try to not cross paths, period. Because again, when we talk about trauma, you don't know what people's financial situation is. They don't know what your financial situation is. Think back to how you may have invested some time in some relationships, uh, Capricorn, and you feel like people have taken advantage of you financially, right? And you just like, wow, I can't believe I invested so much time only to be taken advantage of financially. Some people don't recover from that for real. Some people don't look at it as a circulation of wealth. What they look at it is like, okay, you hurt me. The only thing that's going to save me is for me to hurt you back. So consider that, consider that, you know, um, as you're healing. Not everybody has the I forgive you spirit. So consider that. So, yeah, so that's not where you want to be stubborn. That's not where you want to be bullheaded. Here we also have the four of wands here. And so... I feel like somebody has, um, you have some good news trying to come in. First of all, it's not your responsibility to keep going back and keep trying to mend ties. Like, especially see how these people have already moved on with their lives. It's not your, it's not your, because now you're putting yourself, you're putting yourself in a danger zone of reattaching something that's already been cut. And now you're putting yourself in a game of chess. Because that's what I'm seeing here. Somebody would somebody would totally play you in a game of chess because you're so broken hearted and so hurt. Somebody, we're talking about the, so I don't know who I'm talking to because they came out the nine of swords. So broken hearted and so hurt over something that source wants you to completely detach. Because if you keep going back and trying to reconnect, you're leaving yourself wide open for spell work and everything else. Because this uh, uh, Pluto being retrograde and also Mercury being post-shadow retrograde until May 13th, the messages are still trickling in. So let's say you're waiting on, you're waiting on, because everything is lining up perfectly for you, right? So you're waiting on more creative ideas to make additional streams of income. This is why it's important to get with the King of Cups energy. Someone who is pouring fresh water or helping you to pour fresh water, like, you know, you know, things happen, this is how you can nurture yourself in the meantime, that's kind of thing. And so you don't carry the brunt of the weight on your shoulder. So you feel like, okay, it's my responsibility to go back and mend fences and then get played. Right? So I do feel like somebody has um, some good news coming across your path. Two pieces of good news that you've been praying for is coming across your path. I do see some kind of teamwork and, you know, more money coming across your path. But please learn some lessons from... Sword energy is really about learning lessons, 
about taking some kind of action and sharpening somebody's communication skills. That's what this is really about here. Sharpening communication skills, right? Here we also have the goddess card, right? And so when we talk about the empress card, this is abundance and potential. Your creativity is growing. And, um, and so you want to make sure that you stay connected to healthy energies, right? That's encouraging you not to be stubborn and bullheaded and have a higher mind and innate spiritual understanding of things, you know, and just the material world. Because there are some people who will do anything. They'll do anything for money. They don't care who, you know, who they sabotage. They don't care what kind of relationships they mess up. You don't ever want to be that person, for real. It's not that much money in the world that somebody could just like... That's, that's where financial literacy comes in, that you would just ruin relationships, right? And so, and as you, some of you all have been in those spaces where people have just, you know, ruined relationships with you and they didn't care. They look back, they like, they don't care how much money you spend, how much time, effort, energy you spent in the relationship. You could have been doing something else and they just take it as, okay, so what, right? So... I definitely feel like somebody has new and exuberant love coming across their path. And I see you sitting on your throne of your, you know, your wisdom and your knowledge, you know, because you're, again, you take a look back um, and nurture yourselves. Here we also have the King of Cups here. So this gets you, as far as two types of situations in particular, definitely gets you to King of your emotions, you know, a uh, very compassionate person towards you and also compassionate towards, in other words, you see, you see both sides of the sword you know, and, um, but you're wise enough not to go back and mend any fences with any ex friends, ex love interests or whatever, because it puts you directly in five of swords. That's where they're playing a game of chess now. And you don't know how that ends because them playing a game of chess, they, they in it to win it at this point. So that's what I'm seeing for you all. So that's where you don't want to be stubborn. You just want to gain a, an innate spiritual understanding of some things and just know that your financial situation is changing and now it's time for healing. Like I said, rest is one of the most overlooked rituals. That's a form of healing. Get your rest. We're still in the new moon phasing. though it's waxing crescent. And this is where you want to pour into yourself. Another thing when we're talking about water too is even listening to water sounds. Hopefully, you know, people do that. I know a lot of times people are like, well, listening to water sounds. I haven't really listened to water sounds. You don't want to wait for your water to get low. That's spiritual dehydration. I mean, I know your body, you know, when you just all of a sudden you feel like your lips feel dry, your your skin feels like it's not nourished. You want to listen to the vibration of sound too. You don't want to become spiritually dry. Well, now you're, you could put yourself in spaces. In other words, protect your energy. You could put yourself in, in very toxic environments where they're pouring into. That's even certain types of music you could be listening to, what you're watching on social media, all those things. Protect your energy. Here we have Page of Swords. Your anxiety about something will be going away very soon. Here we have the Three of Cups. Here we have the Temperance card, the Strength card. Here we have the Two of Swords and also the Six of Pentacles. I hope this is making sense to somebody. Here we have Page of Swords. This is whatever your anxiety about some situations are, are going to go away very soon. Remember, the moon only stays in a zodiac sign up to about two and a half days. So, like I said, then it'll be moving into Leo. So, whenever you the moon is in Cancer, you can ask yourself the question, do I feel appreciated? Do other pe people feel appreciated by me? Am I listening to how they communicate? What kind of messages do I send out? Right. Do I send out the message that I'm all about the material world? Or do they send out the message that they don't care about the friendships or romantic relationship that they that they are all about the material world? Like, what is it like? Sometimes you go back to like past relationships like 15, 20 years ago and somebody didn't care. You you spent your hard earned money on some things and they're looking at, well, I thought I was going to get you know, $1,500 this or $3,000 that, but all your budget could afford was five, $600 or $100 or $20 for that, right? And, and they let you know, oh, I don't really appreciate what your hard-earned money could get me. Like, I want you to put yourself in an enormous amount of debt. I don't care about your other expenses, those kind of things, right? So that's where you want to start in your mind, journaling and parting ways with that kind of, you know, that those types of relationships. Here we also have the Three of Cups here. So 
This lets me know that someone is going to be in a, in a posture of gratitude, just very grateful that the past is behind you. Because again, soulmate energy, you know, coming into your life, soulmate energy could be a, a brother or a sister. It could be a best friend. It could be um, just somebody who really gets you at the soul level. It could be a parent. You know, some people may say that their dad is their soulmate or their mom is their soulmate or, you know, um, um, something that soothes your soul. You know, it could be somebody you grew up with, you know, that's your soulmate. Um, uh, but the conversation around money is a very emotional one for a lot of people and when you when you got to be very sensitive when you talk about it because some people have such a negative relationship they haven't been taught about the energy of that and so um, it's more than just that so source is saying here's a temperance card and also the strength card so um so when we talk about the temperance card, you you have you are you you desire harmony and a resolution of conflict, right? But it's an internal conflict within yourself. That's why I said don't be stubborn because you going back into a situation like I'm looking at the five of swords, you're throwing yourself directly in somebody's crosshairs to play you. And I don't care how smart you think you are, Again, you're throwing yourself into a wilderness situation. Leave it alone. Just cut it off and move on with your life. Here we have the strength card. Exhibit some strength, right? Get some strength. This is where you're mastering spirit matter and you're healing yourself. You're not looking for one last conversation. You're not letting somebody else coerce you into having one last conversation with something that's over. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Sword energy is traumatic. Here we have the two of swords. Take the blindfolds off. Take the blindfolds off. Here we also have the six of pentacles. The six of pentacles, right? So source is leading you towards financial independence, but you have to look at it this way. You're not looking for a human's approval because source has already approved you. That's why you're still breathing. I know when I say that, I'm not. I'm really not being facetious. I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm serious. But when you have that, I'm looking for you know, um, someone to forgive me, or I'm looking for their approval kind of energy. I'm telling you, you put yourself right in, you, you put yourself in, you put yourself in danger of being taken stone cold advantage of. So you have to be confident that, okay, you know, I'm learning lessons too. Consider this again, sword energy. When you've lost someone, whether they their body was laid to rest and their spirit ascended because energy never dies, or you've lost a job, or your marriage was at risk, or um, you were in a new location because you're an earth sign, you could be you could have relocated just trying to get your bearings and trying to just make everything make sense. You could be in a new job and real nervous about some things. I really want you all to be compassionate for to you know towards yourselves. Consider yourselves first. Please Capricorn, pour into yourselves cuz somebody is overthinking something grossly. Put yourselves first and you're running the risk of somebody taking advantage of you or some people putting taking advantage of you. So um just trying to help you. Just really really trying to help you all because people out here they don't get back time. They really are. There's people out here on get back time. And um, that high priest card, here we have, okay, these cards jumped out. Here we have the six of wands, which lets me know that source is, source is bringing something into your life that's going to keep you booked and busy. So you really won't have a chance to even, you know, have any chance to just do those steps. Like protect yourself this weekend, you know, think about, you know, moving forward. I feel like when the moon moves into Leo, because Leo is moved, ruled by the sun, um, that's going to give somebody the strength to kind of sort of, okay, the fire behind you, you know, to kind of sort of, okay, now I'm, I'm feeling a lot more, um, I'm feeling a lot stronger and then I can move, you know, beyond this. And then by that time it'll be, and then after that, I'll move into Virgo where you can just really say, okay, I can meticulously analyze you know, some situations, I mean, very like with a fine tooth come with the eye of a hawk, I can analyze some situations and realize, you know what, I need to move on, right? Here's a judgment card, which is attached to Pluto, right? Like I said, Pluto, Pluto is the um, 
total transformation. I feel like you're going through a total transformation. And so you don't want somebody to force you to change before you've had time to think about it and process it. But do not go backwards. Don't go backwards, right? Because this is what you'd be going into. That's what you'd be going into. I feel like there's some people who have already, you know, their energy is pulling you back just by just the memory, something they could have said. That's another form of spell work, spelling words. Somebody could have said something to you that put a spell on you and you may not even be aware of it. And so you find yourself thinking about um, things they've said to you. You think about things that they may have done, in, you know, in the past and they put a spell on you and you're trying to figure out why can't I get this energy off my mind. So you start listening to music that you all used to listen to. You start thinking about them. You start having dreams. It takes you down this dark path. You start reading the same, like if y'all are part of a book club, you start finding yourself in that space. Sources so saying it's time to flush them completely out of your life. Can flush them completely out of your life because they're on, they are looking at these cards right here. They just want to, they want to hurt you as bad as they feel like you hurt them. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Elevator music. So yeah, so yeah, you're trying to go through a, a total transformation. But remember, this is within yourselves. You know that you're not a materialistic person. You know that you are not, um, you know that you have, there's a lot of abundance, a lot of creative ideas inside of you. We have almost 9 billion people on the planet for you to co-create, you know, with someone else or other people, you know, uh, we're in a digital age. I'm trying to help somebody with their creativity. We're in a digital age. There's a lot of energies um, that will source will give you a lot of ideas. Everything is lining up perfectly for you as far as teamwork is concerned, but never go back to, you know, something that, because like I said before, source wants you to cut ties, completely cut ties with something completely cut ties, completely cut ties. So, yep. Like I said, plotting and planning seven of swords, seven of swords. And that would not be wise for them. Even for my cross watchers, that that just wouldn't be wise. Like I said before, somebody for them, it was a nightmare for them because of the energies that they are around, right? They're around some very um, dark energies. And they keep talking about you, Capricorn, and the, the, what you did to them and this kind of stuff. And that's what I'm saying. It will put you in this position right here. And you're sitting there hurting somewhere and, you know, trying to process your thoughts and thinking, okay, well, I just have a, a phone call. If I just reach out and, you know, contact my old business partner or my old love interest or my old, cause I had a dream about them. I hope that they're okay. I see where your heart is. Somebody has a big heart. You love deep and you love hard, but I'm, I'm trying to tell you, cut them off for good. That's not the frequency they're on. They're on a whole different frequency. They're on a different frequency. So yeah, like I said, you got keep continue moving forward. The number six is in the shape of a person who is about to give birth to something. And so you're about to give birth to uh, something that you pray for financial independence. And so someone definitely feels like you cut them, like you cut into their joy. You cut into the quality because we talk about waters, quality of relationships. They feel like you cut into their friendship. You cut into their money. You cut into their ideas. You cut into their enthusiasm. Right. And so while you have a big heart, your head and heart should not be at war with each other because somebody will be straight up take your kindness for weakness. Here we have the eight of swords here. It would be a form of self-sabotage if you were to go back, have any kind of conversation, have any kind of conversation whatsoever. Here we have the ten of swords. This is what you're headed towards. A very harmonious relationship with somebody. And not any energies that you left behind. Here we do have this right here. Here we have the eight of um this the six of swords, right? So it's really a wish fulfilled. Like I, I feel like somebody's gonna meet somebody new. If you're single and you desire to meet somebody new, whether it's in a friendship, romantic situation, like I saw here in the four of wands, and I see you being booked and busy and not burdened at all, but you're not going backwards to anything. I know sometimes when like things are going well in your life, you feel like, oh, okay, I had a dream about such and such. I haven't talked to them in years and I was going through this and that. And let me just check and see, you know, how everything is going. You are not going to be met with a warm reception. I could tell you that right now. 
So I see that somebody has a really big heart here, right? But you don't want to be an overgiver at all. You just, that's a major setup for a big disappointment. Ten of Wands. Yeah. So I see you moving on to booked and busy and not burdened at all. So this is this is really good news. Here we have Knight of Wands right here. Yeah. It's so it's just saying, like I said before I even pulled the card, stay away from certain energies. Just stay away from them. Stay away from connecting to anything that you pray to get out of. Anybody that's connected to anybody that you pray to get away from. Here's the four of wands here. Yeah, it's not your responsibility to go back and clear up anything at all. Here we have the, the three of wands. So I feel like your prayer life is increasing, but so is your meditation life. And it's not like you're being a jerk about it. You're learning how to protect yourself. That's why I need you all to put yourselves first. Because if you take the time to just put yourselves first, create some kind of a discipline, you won't put yourself back. You won't live in this constant negative cycle. It's a karmic cycle with yourself of regret. I should have spoken up sooner. I should have known better. I had so much going on that I didn't know. And such and such. You just like you. It's like a person who, you know, you put yourself in a situation, Capricorn, where people can use that against you. You're never doing anything enough, like the right way. Well, you could have done that and I would have done this and said, no, stop the madness. I was grieving. And if you're that freaking insensitive, when I was grieving, you about to get a different person, right? <laughs> like you about to really get cut off and you can say what you want to say about me. That's, that's the person that I feel like some people that when I, when I look at your cards, you're going to have to develop a strategy to say that people are that sensitive when you're grieving. You just gonna have to part ways with them, no matter who they are. Just cut them off. Forget it. You know what? If I told you I'm grieving something and you're that insensitive, guess what? I don't want you as a friend. I don't care what you tell people. I'm grieving. I need time to process my thoughts. If I'm starting a new job, and if I'm starting a new job and people that's used to hanging out with you, you trying to learn the new job and you're like, oh, well, you don't hang out with us anymore. Didn't I just tell you I just started a new job? Oh, oh, oh yeah, I need time to learn my new job. Like if you learned a new, if you was on a new job, then I would give you some time to process the new job. You're still in a probationary period. I want you to keep your job, improve your, your lifestyle or whatever the case may be, right? So that's what Source is trying to help you with is like to speak up and tell people like, listen, you create, you don't let people control your mind where you go back and you, you living in regret, right? So that's what Source is trying to tell you is that when you're going through things and people are insensitive to what you were going through and death seems to be the one that's tricked, like really, really tricky, like the ending of something, right? There's like the permanent ending, not just a physical death because that's just death in general is tricky, right? So a marriage ends and you got this person who was you, who you thought was your friend to the very end like a chucky doll and i mean not like a chucky doll y'all know what i'm saying but you thought that friend was your 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 friend to the very end capricorn until you're going through some kind of a crisis in your life and you really need that friend to be your friend and they they you know on a different frequency oh i you know i thought that was over years ago i thought you i thought you wanted to no 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 that's not how i need to be nurtured i just need some time to myself to process my thoughts to journal the such and such and such and such and they thinking that you want to go out partying harder no i need some time to process <laughs> So that's what Source is trying to get somebody to do so that you don't put yourself in a situation. I think Pluto is going to teach a lot of people a lot of lessons about just, just your, your metamorphosis and just how obsessed with some people are with getting you back. Whether they feel like you're, you're the one that got away and then their mind is seeing it as a positive and they're saying, man, I really wish, you know, I, I, I was the, I mean, they was the one that got away as a friend. I, I, I should have, you know, I should have been thinking clearly, or they think that you got away with something and they're, they're dead set on getting you back in a negative sense. Like, oh, you hurt me. I'm gonna hurt you worse. So gotten away, you know, Kundalini experience, right? So that's what I'm saying for you all. So wake up, wake up, stop overthinking this. Stop overthinking it. Know when to close out cycles in love with yourself. You don't have to have one last conversation. Move on, move on, move on. It's self-sabotage, self-sabotage, self-sabotage. Here we have Wheel of Fortune. So you're going to feel very fortunate. I'm telling you, Wheel of Fortune really is just um, some kind of unexpected change, you know. So a negative cycle has been broken 
And again, this is the thing that did it. The King of Cups. Talking to very wise people who really encourage you to pour into yourselves and put yourselves first. To put yourselves first. That's not selfishness. That's a form of self-care. That is a form of self-care. You don't want to get used to, you know, jagged edges ending in relationships. That's where your breakthrough is going to come in. That's where you say, okay, I'm definitely awakened from another nightmare. We got 999 here. 999 would let me know that you're a very unique person, meaning that you have a big heart. You love deep. You love hard. And you love in a very unique way. But Source is really trying to help somebody to be in divine masculine energy. Speak up. You know, you know, if you're inspired or, you know, you're you're moved by certain things and you feel like, okay, I'm really, I just need, I think, and this would be for men and women to speak up. Like really, you don't want to, you don't want to wait until your heart is cracked into bitty pieces, itty bitty pieces because somebody that you love broke your heart and now all of a sudden they, they like the, the levy broke. They telling you, you don't speak up. I don't, it's hard to get through to you. You stubborn. And all of a sudden you sit there like a deer in headlights. Like when did all this happen? Work on it right now. Work on it right now. And the same thing on the other side, the receiving side. So here we have the eight of wands. Source is going to speed some things up for you. This I'm telling you, you got some things speeding up, booked and busy, not burdened at all, but don't go backwards. Please do not go backwards. Don't go backwards. Like I said, booked and busy here, booked and busy here. Um, you know, you and somebody together. Um, here we go. Seven. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So double booked and busy. You and somebody coming together, it's going, it's going, things are going to work out fast for you and somebody, right? So again, meditation and, um, and this is for you and somebody coming together, like in terms of business or love or whatever this thing are here. But yeah, the majority of this is like, I see somebody has, you have a lot of great ideas. You inspire and motivate a lot of people, Capricorn. You're incredibly smart, right? But somebody lives too much in their head at this point. Journal it, gather your thoughts. If, if, if you can't even... Like I said, every day, daydreams, night dreams, if you can, right? You got a, you know, cell phone, open up the note section. We do have digital calendars and digital journals. There's never any per any pressure to purchase those things, you know, but, but at least get it out. That's a form of communication too, you know, it's just your own private thoughts, your journaling. Just take five minutes out the 24 hours you got in a day and say, okay, I need to journal my thoughts, you know, right now so I can get my thoughts together. So at least I got it out right and toss all the negative thinking into a fire pit about a situation and just release it i part ways with this for good for life i don't know where their mind is i remember some things that some people said to me i don't know where their mind is i don't know what's going on with them i don't know what their mental state is i don't need to talk to them to find out what their mental state is like you're gonna go back to somebody who has a vendetta they're gonna you think they're gonna tell you the truth no Nine of Pentacles. Again, sources moving you towards you and somebody towards financial independence. So again, you want the main the, the main card here is um you have a lot of great ideas. Here's the King of Cups again. Sources putting you around a lot of mature energies to help you to really just remind you to pour into you. To pour into you. So yeah. To really, really pour into you. So this is good. It's always good to be around people who are already on their throne, encouraging you to stay on yours and just see things from a different, you know, different frequency. Because it looks like somebody is extremely, you know, creative, which which is good. You're extremely creative and very, very smart. You got a big heart. You have a lot of great ideas. So it's making sure you're financially independent. You're going to feel just very fortunate to... You know, look at things, have an innate spiritual understanding of some things. But uh, here we have trust your first mind. Your new home awaits, right? So somebody could be, you know, buying a new home or maybe moving to a new job. That could be a new home. Um, but your well of joy is within you. And so you're dealing with a sex demon. Um, somebody failed at stealing your identity. I think I mentioned this on the other channel, on my other yeah, it's time to expand your brand. 
Um, the first red flags, you want to pray and meditate. Your enemy's playing backfire. I'm going to talk a little bit about, because I was trying not to extend this reading. Your laughter is medicine. Mm -hmm. They apologize. Somebody apologizes for hurting you. Your ancestors have a message uh, and create the change that you want. And so pray for them. Yeah, you know, they're going to need prayer for real. They're going to really need prayer. I need y'all to wrap this up for real. Like, you know, um, you're dealing with a, a, a sex demon. I talked about this one time before. They were trying to steal your identity. So when you're dealing with energies that are trying to spill your, steal your identity spiritually, it's very much like you feel violated. Just very, think of, if I can give somebody kind of an analogy, it's like, you know, if you've ever le left your um, car doors unlocked um, and somebody stole your, um, you came back and somebody like, you came back and something was missing. Or you know how out of sorts you feel like if you're moving around your house and you like, okay, you lay your keys down somewhere and you just like, you just so busy moving so fast. You got a lot on your mind and you don't even realize where you left your key. Like, okay, wait a minute, I know I put my keys right here. No, I'm not going crazy. Right. So you try to backtrack your steps. Right. Um, spiritually, when people try to steal your ideas, things happen. Like, for instance, your driver's license, you could lose your driver's license. Right. That's kind of part of it. Or. It's so many energies around you where you can't even really get your bearings to find out what's what, right? You may have thought, okay, you lost, you dropped something, you could have been around some people, um, but it's it's the part of processing. That's also a portal, right? You know, you're having access to your picture or having access to your signature or having access to some part of you. You're so busy scrambling and trying to figure out where stuff is and I don't know where this and that is and so on and so forth. You feel like you, you feel like something is off balance, right? You feel like something is off balance. Something is out of balance, but that's the goal is to keep you off centered. You know, you're an air. I mean, excuse me, you're an earth sign. So you need balance, right? So source is saying, when energies are trying to steal, it, it's so it's so much deep. This video would be two, three hours if I really went into just how people are able to steal people's spiritual inheritance, right? Because a lot, a lot of times people think inheritance is just a physical, like stealing your house or write your name off of wills and doing all kinds of stuff. But being around sex demons, you don't have to necessarily sleep with them. For them to still, all you need to be is um, inches off of their physical body, right? And so let's say, for instance, because somebody is really, really gifted and talented, right? And how people steal people's gifts, right? You can have a lot of gifts and talents and people are just like that close to you. Your mind could be on something different. Your mind could be on, oh, this is, um, you know, this is my good friend. They would never do X, Y, and Z. Let me see how I get a better way to kind of explain it. Have y'all ever worked in an environment where um, you worked on a project and you put all your blood, sweat, and tears on a project and somebody came in at the last minute, swooped in, maybe changed one word, one, um, one slide or something like that, and basically, you know, made it like, like it was like a, a joint effort, like they put 50, 50 on, you know, it's like they, it's a, like a joint effort kind of thing. It kind of feels like that. Like you just don't know who you are to some degree. You almost feel so out of balance. And so that's why it's not a good idea for you to ever go back because you feel like, okay, you were something happened and you're just not yourself. And so for you to go back like this, five of swords, I'm, I'm not sure if I explained it the best for somebody, but that's just one analogy. When you um, constantly look back like this, you're saying essentially I'm reconnecting a cord that needs to be cut, that needed to stay cut so I can detach from that energy. That's trying to steal your identity, trying to steal everything about you. So that means I don't want you to connect to anything you feel I don't want you to connect to the King of Cups, which could be a man or woman. Really, I know when you're learning tarot, you hear it's a man, but it could be someone who is um, who is balanced, you know, who's also balanced out. 
you're on your, there on their throne and they're encouraging you to nurture and pour into yourself like you feel so out of place you almost feel like you have to go back to the very energy that is draining your gifts and talents and leaving you in a state of confusion you got to go back to them so that they can project their toxicity into you so now people don't recognize you and it could be a group of energies that do it so you so turned around and the, and so when people come around you that know you they don't recognize you and they'll say to you like well what's gotten into you like are you okay is everything when you're dealing with someone who is very wise someone who is really gifted and talented they know how to keep it on on the low so that to the goal is to get you away from those energies permanently they're trying to help you it's like sources sending somebody in to say come on this person doesn't know that people are trying to steal their identity let me get them away from them right and so they know king of cups know king and queen of cups know what you're dealing with but so does into identity thefts they know what's going on too so their eyes get bigger when king and queen of cups come around because they like okay they trying to straighten up trying to figure out some stuff because they up to no good that's why sometimes um parents will tell their kids that's not really your friend or they'll walk into a space and they'll say that's not really so and so because they see shape shifting and just you trying to get your bearings as an earth sign that's why i always say to you all you know make sure you're in spaces where you know for certain that people have your best interest at heart because a lot of times people don't know this reading i mean for real this reading would be this reading for real if, if i really mm, mm -mm. <laughs> All I can say to you is don't be stubborn. That's what I'm just trying to tell you. Don't be stubborn. Don't go back to anything because, again, you be putting yourself directly into a nightmare. There's some energies right now that are that's still, you know, on a different, what I say before, 999. Nine, nine. That's why I say you're, not, you're unique. You're very unique, right? And people know that you're very uh, gifted and talented. They know that you're incredibly smart. They know you have fire ideas. You know, they know that your just your presence in their lives can make them financially independent. So here we have think thank the past for your lesson and leave it where it belongs so that you can make the best of life that is still waiting to be fulfilled by only you. So when you think people are being negative about the energies that's around you, they see something you don't want to see. You're looking for the physical and they see it in the spirit realm. Somebody was um, somebody, some energies were trying to steal your um, trying to steal your identity, your spiritual. They were trying to steal your spiritual gifts. And um, and so but like I said before, you're going to feel very fortunate now that that did not happen. You know, the. Uh, you've gone through a total transformation you've gone through a total transformation courage let me be open to courageously take the steps that are shown that's right toss their name right into a burning bowl toss it into a burning bowl these are the energies that you left behind toss it into a burning bowl And start pouring into yourselves first. I accept myself as I am. These are um, affirmations for acceptance. I accept what is without resistance. I have the power to choose my actions. I have the power to create change. I practice patience with myself. I am loved. I am not alone. I am at peace. Yeah. It happens in a lot of organizations. It happens in a lot of industries that a lot of people, they drop their guards. They, you know, a lot of people drop their guards. They, uh think oh i'm around certain types of people you know they're gonna embrace me with love and attention and care but because you are so smart and because you have such a big heart you know yeah somebody some people didn't accomplish their, what they set out to do i'll just put it that way So somebody's going to feel very fortunate when you can start doing the mirror work. Start looking in the mirror and you can look up mirror work. Start doing the mirror work today. 
I am grateful for all that is unfolding in my life and all that is yet to come. All right. Hopefully that is helpful to you all. Like, you know, like I said before, take this weekend, take the time to really nurture yourselves, journal, you know, your thoughts, you know, if you can limit uh, social media time, you know, those kind of things and just kind of really pour into yourselves. Google is a great resource to look up your, you know, once you've pulled your birth chart. And again, we have links for free birth charts below, link to free Chiron. Do the research, you know, on yourself so that you'll start learning more about spiritual identity theft. This is not like because you feel just as violated as you would if somebody you know, like broke into your house while you were asleep. Imagine, you know, you hear about those stories where people wake up and they're like, I feel like, you know, somebody was in my house and I felt like, you know, that's this very real. They have people still, you know, your, your identity and they do all kinds of stuff. Um, so anyway, that's what I have for you all. Hopefully this has been helpful and, um, just take some good extra special care of yourselves, you know, uh, during the weekend. And like I said, you're going to feel very fortunate to have um, cut some ties with some energies. Um, I feel like somebody is going to start remembering just kind of how some people from the past, just how shifty their eye movement was, how they may not have seemed like they were really that um, attracted to you in the sense that you may have been attracted to them. And I don't mean necessarily in a sexual way, it could have been in a sexual, but I mean like in a creative process kind of way they weren't really that attracted to you in that sense because they were on an assignment you got to start to recognize when people are on an assignment right and so somebody was on an assignment to still spiritually still um you know um yeah steal your identity they failed at it though which makes them even more obsessed since pluto is currently retrograde which makes them even more obsessed. So you should be just that determined to physically stay away from them, cut all ties with them all completely. That's what I have for you. I'll see you all. Um, I'll see you all in. Well, I think you all have a, an extra video. This is a bonus video. So that's what I have for you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.